So what else what else do we got going on here? What's your major? Well it does, it does actually. Yeah. So a lot of times doesn't matter it doesn't say, I mean look, there's something called uh, intellectual idolatry or pride. You know, I mean like when the guy the guy's looking for God, you know, and he's like, Man, where should I go to find God? And so you know where he goes? He goes right to the mirror. And he says, Ah, there he is. There's the God I was looking for. He's right there in the mirror. Why does he do that? Because this is the God that gets to determine how you should live your life, what's right, what's wrong, how many hours a week you can watch pornography. How many times have you told lies to human beings? A lot, right? How, who holds you accountable for those lies? Who doesn't lie? It's not the question. Who holds you accountable for those lies? Yeah, but that's not the standard. The standard is, hey, whatever everyone else does, you can do. If everybody out here was eating one another, would that mean that you should eat one another too? I think there's plenty of food to go around. Well, if everybody out here was, uh, was I don't know, like being a pedophile, does that mean that you would think it was okay to be a pedophile just because everybody else was a pedophile? Just because everybody else does something doesn't mean that it's right. If you lived in 1940 Nazi Germany, a guy like you who's been brainwashed by your culture, you probably would have been on the side of Hitler doing whatever they tell you to say. You probably would have been the guy doing this because that's the kind of life, that's the mindset that you have as an unbeliever. The mindset of an unbeliever is I'm going to do whatever my social, uh, my, my, uh, my society tells me to do, whatever my society tells me to believe. That's just how it is. So if you lived in 1940 Mississippi or 1740, 1840 Mississippi, you would have had slaves probably. You at least would have been, con you know, you would condone that. Why? Because you're doing whatever your society tells you to do. You see what I mean? So the, the problem with that is this. You've been indoctrinated by your culture. Whereas with the Christians, see, we have, a, we have a standard to go by so that whenever things don't correspond or don't line up with our standard here, we can call that wrong. So just because everyone else is lying, we have a Bible that says, thou sh don't lie. You know, don't bear false witness. The Bible says all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire. So we don't say, yeah, but God, everybody else is doing it. We say, God, help me not to lie. We say, God, have mercy on me. I'm a sinful person. I have a, I'm a liar. I need help. You see the difference? So that's why Christ said he came not for the righteous, but for the sinful, for those who recognize that they're sinful. So there's some, there's some people out there that think they're righteous, that they don't need a savior, but we find out that they're actually just as sinful as everyone else. They just don't realize that, well, they do realize that, but they're suppressing the truth that there is a day of judgment to come. So going back to the question, how many times have you told lies to human beings? Yeah, lost count, man. So in other words, you are biased against God. You have a reason for not liking God, in other words. Because you know God opposes your life. God opposes what you're for. God opposes the God that you love, the God you see in the mirror. God opposes these things, and you want to keep your autonomy. You want to keep doing your own thing. You want to live your own life. You want to go out and be able to get drunk or whatever it is that you're into, right? And you're upset because God is not going to let you do that. My friend, you are. I promise. And, and I know that. Again, I know that because I used to be you. Every Christian out here at one time was not a Christian. And we too once loved our sin. And that's why I can come out and I can tell you definitively, not only because God's word tells me, but experientially because I was there myself, that my friend, there's a day of judgment coming and your conscience bears witness to this. So why not listen to your conscience rather than try to suppress the truth that you know about God? Now he's on his phone because he's nervous. That's how it goes, right? But my friends, it's not... Look, my man, I'm not... Do you realize why I'm saying this? First of all, I love the guy. I have, to, I have to admit, I really do. I love the guy. You know what I mean? I love the guy. He reminds me of a friend I used to play uh, Texas Hold'em with every Friday night. We'd all, we'd all sit around and play Texas Hold'em. The guy's name was Zach. Good buddy of mine. He's still a buddy of mine. I think he's lost, but uh, when I was lost, man, we'd sit around and the guy just looked just like this guy, except my friend Zach he had nice, long, blonde hair. But I swear, he looked just like this guy. And in fact, his brother actually got a PhD from Texas Tech. Maybe there's, uh, I don't know, you know, maybe there's some kind of, uh, maybe you're related somewhere in the past. I don't know. He's probably 34 right now. Uh, Waters. No. Yeah, it would be funny though, right? It'd be crazy. But really, because you, you guys look like each other and, and, I mean, you know, honestly, man, if I was, I'm assuming, what, you're 22? It's close. One side or the other. You know, the thing is, man, I promise you, dude. 13 years ago, when I was your age, I would have been hanging out with you. You would have been hanging out with me. No, I pro no, it's the other way around. You would be wanting to hang out with me, but I'd be like, I don't know, dude. I mean, right? But here's the reality, okay? What happens is this. When I love my sin, I don't like God. Because you know why? Because God exposes my sin. 
So in other words, there's this tension that's going on in the hearts of a human being, and it's this. I I know that I should love God, but I don't love God. I know I should hate my sin, but I don't hate my sin. I love my sin. So there's tension. So when somebody is coming out and they're saying, listen, man, did Christ rise from the dead? You're saying, I don't know. Right? When I'm saying, listen, man, does God exist? I hope so. I know. What, no, do you, though? Do you hope so? You really do? So what kind of God do you hope exists? You really do. All right. Now, what do you think a righteous God would do with the sins that you've committed? Pardon. How? Pardon. How would he do that? Pardon your sins. Don't know? Yeah. You know, it's funny you say that because anybody out here talk to a Muslim? We talked to a Muslim yesterday. Muslim from India, right? Yeah, Ryan has. You know, what's funny about Muslims is they'll say this, okay? They'll say the same thing as this guy just said. I'm going to call him Zach because he looks like my friend Zach, right? So Zach here said the exact same thing as the Muslim from India. They say this, okay? I hope God is just and I hope God pardons my sin. Well, how can a just God pardon your sin and still be just? How can he do that? How can he pardon your sin and still be just? What do you say? No, he doesn't. Justice flows from his nature. It's not arbitrary. Justice doesn't change according to whatever the day's like. Justice is, like God says, the soul who sins must die. If you sin against God, there's called the great dilemma. That's what the gospel's all about, my friend. See, the, the Muslim will say this. The Muslim will say, God is both merciful and just. Well, he can't be both. Why? Because if, he's, if he forgives you of your sins, then that means he's not just because there's no payment for it. But if he's, if he's just, that means he cannot, he's not going to forgive you of sins. That means you're, you're, you're damned. So that's exactly right. I'm glad you see this because I'm starting to think you're, you're playing with me, Zach, but that's all right. So here's the thing, okay? When you have a God who is just, a God who is righteous, then how can he forgive you of your sins and still be just? If he does, it's kind of like bribing him. You know, like the Catholics, no offense, Zach, if you're a Catholic. The Catholics want to say, or the Muslims, right? If I do enough good works, then I can be right with God. So you're basically having to bribe God to get something out of it, okay? But that means God's not just. That means God's accepting good works. That means he's a God who accepts bribes, right? That's not the God of the universe. Whereas Christianity is reconciled in the cross because the only way that God's justice can be satisfied is if somebody pays for your sin in your place. And the only one who can do that is somebody who is both sinless and God himself. Because the value of God, see it's like this, right? So when you're talking about God, by the way, when you bite into a piece of fruit that God tells you not to bite into, is it fair that you're damned for all of eternity to hell for biting into one piece of fruit? Is that fair? What's up, Chaz? That's fair? Anybody else? You know, a lot of times they'll say, well, that's not fair that if I sin one time, then that, that, that deserves an eternity in hell. And the question is, why is that? Why is that? And it's not only the rule, Chaz, you're exactly right. It's the one, see, here, here's the thing, okay? If I step on a cockroach, is anybody gonna get mad at me? I mean, even the liberal hippies, the tree huggers, they won't even, if you step on a cockroach, not even they'll get mad. Only the Buddhists get mad if you step on a cockroach. Because that could be Grandpa Freddy, you know what I mean? However, look, the reality is, is if I step on a cockroach, nobody's gonna get mad at me. Why? Because we don't see a lot of value in cockroaches. If I kill a cat, now don't do that, Zach. If I kill a cat, what is the penalty in our society for killing a cat? Or dog, anybody know? Jail. It is jail, you know how long? Depending on what state, about six months. In jail for if you, you know, just, just inhumanely kill a cat or a dog. Why is there more of a consequence when you kill a cat than there is a co uh, cockroach, why? Why? There's more value in the cat or dog than there is the cockroach. So the one I commit the crime against, right, that's going to, that's going to determine what kind of uh, consequence there is. So if I kill a human, of course I go to prison or whatever for you know, however many years. Why? Because a human has more value than a dog. Okay? So when you sin against God, God's value is infinite. You're not sinning against a human being whenever you sin against God. Whenever you sin, period, you don't sin just against a human being. You're sinning against the God who has infinite value, the one who has infinite worth, the one who's created all things 
after his, my friends, in the power of his might. And he establishes the rules. That's why when you try to come out, let's say, you know, I know we're not supposed to talk about it, but the LGBTQIA. Now, Zach, were you aware? There you go, Zach. LGBTQIA. What's the last two letters? They added two. Now, if you're out here earlier... I know, I know, it's funny, right? Because I'm telling you, man, I keep up with it way more than like e, even the, the people in the group, okay? LGBTQIAPK plus. What does that stand for? Uh, the P and the K, I asked a guy the other day if it was pedophilia. He's, oh, pansexual maybe, I think is the P. K is, I, nobody knows. So are they not allowed to live their lives if it makes them happy? Or does it upset? Well, same, same with the pedophile, right? I mean, the pedophile, can he not just live his life? It's a big difference. What's different? What's different? Huh? What's different? You know exactly what's different. No, I don't. No, but they're both evil. Well, then you're dumb. Well, see, there's the ad hominem. When you, when you revert to ad hominems, it means you don't have the argument, right? We all know that. You lost the argument. So, so my friends, okay, here's, here's why. Now, if, if he wants to go down that track, I didn't even want to go down this track, but let's talk about it for a second. Just for a second, Zach. I know you're trying to get me off, off topic here. But here's the reality, okay? LGBTQIAPK. What I was saying is exactly this. God is the one who determines what's right and what's not. God is the one that sets that up. So homosexuality, why is that evil? Because, in a sense, God has created male and female to actually work harmoniously together. So anything outside of that is a deviation from God's order. That's why it's sinful, because of who God is. It's a, it's a, it's a rebellious act against God. Same thing like the pedophile. That's why they're all the same. I'm not saying the acts are the same. I'm saying they're all the same in the sense that it's all evil rebellion against God. That's why. Now, again, Zach, if you live in a culture that brainwashes you and says, hey, well, why can't they just... See, that's what I'm saying. If you lived in Nazi Germany in 1940, you would say, hey, why... I mean, I mean, these Jews, I mean, it's better for our society if we just get rid of these guys. Or if you lived in 1740, 1840 Mississippi, you would have said, hey, man, it's good for agriculture. It's good for our, our pocketbooks if we have some slaves. Why? Because you've been brainwashed. You have no standard to go by. See, as a Christian, we have something to stand on regardless of what our culture tries to brainwash us with. Who's better than what? As a society, we're better than that. Than what? Than to condemn LGBTQ as well. What do you mean? Okay, as a society... Okay, that's such an ambiguous statement, Zach. As a society, we're better than that. I mean, like, according... What, what do you mean, first of all, by better? What do you mean by better? Like, morally better, intellectually better? Intellectually. We're intellectually better. Is it more transparent now than they've ever been? So, so you're saying that... Because, let's say, they are less suppressed in our society. You're saying that it's okay? Well, no, it's accepted. They, they, there's, there's a lot of them. I mean, Zach. They're allowed to live the li their lives. It's are you life. certain about that? Where does certainty come from? From the heart. Who made you the judge? I'm my own judge. You're your own judge, too. No, so the pedophile is his own judge, too. It's a lot different. That's, Zach, it's not. That's arbitrary. See, see the problem with this, the guy said, look, he's trying to make morality relative now. You see what he's doing? He's saying, well, it's, they, they should be able to do whatever they want because it feels all right to them, and I think it's all right for them, and hey, we all, we're all our own judge. Well, the pedophile comes along, and he says, wait a minute. You said I can't do what I want to do, but everybody else can do what they want to do. So now all of a sudden, you're imposing what you thought was subjective onto this guy. It seems consensual. The other one seems really demonic. Seems, but see, what standard are you using when you say that? What standard? Zach standard? Is it because? Is that what you mean when you say people look in the mirror and say that's your love? Exactly. Zach is looking at. Zach is trying to establish what's right and wrong according to who he sees in the mirror, according to that guy's standard. You see, he's saying, "Okay, Zach, what's up, man?" He's saying, "Whatever I see is right, has to be right. Whatever I see is wrong, has to be wrong. Why is that? Well, it's because." And by the way, if you, let's all just spread out just a touch, just spread out just a little bit, you know, yeah, yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you, guys. Appreciate yeah, just spread out just a little bit. We'll, we'll, we'll all work together, you know. Good to work with you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, some guys out here earlier is really bossy and nosy and just really mean, man. I don't know if that guy's still out here. It was really tough, man. So I'm out. I'm glad you're out here, though. You seem like you really know what's, what's going on. I appreciate that. So if you're six feet apart, you don't have to wear a mask. But if you're closer, then you need to wear a mask. Perfect. That sounds fair to me. Yeah. So if you're not six, my friends, if you're 
You don't have to wear the mask unless you're six feet, of, unless you're within six feet. Yeah, y'all hear that? So you don't have to, you don't have to wear the mask if you're within, six, if you're outside of six feet. Okay, so that's good news. What's up, Chaz? Yeah, everybody, mask up unless you're unless you're on an island to yourself. Then you don't have to wear masks. Okay, according to the boss, boss just left. Hey, Amen. That's why my friend, we wanted paperwork. He was lying. You see that? The guy was lying. After all that, he was a liar. My friend's here. Now, Zach, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Now, Zach, wait a minute, sir. You just told me that morality is arbitrary, and now you're telling me I'm wrong for telling him something that I wanted to say. What's up with that? You're being a hypocrite. What's that? No, I wouldn't call anybody an idiot. No, that's why I record everything, Zach, but I didn't call him an idiot. Yeah, but Zach, why are you bearing false witness, man? Now, Zach, look. Okay, look. The reason that you're having this problem, Zach, is that you are assuming, of all the knowledge, by the way, did I ask you a personal question, of all the knowledge there is to be had in the universe, what percentage would you say you have? Less, so, so, okay, so he says he has less than, now, that's confusing me, Zach, you know why? Because you are making yourself out to be like the definitive standard for the LGBTQ community and why what they're doing is right. Now I find out that you, Admit that you hardly have any knowledge. How much knowledge do you have? Bingo. I love that. You see what I mean? What Zach, I have a little more than you do, but not much more. Would you like a mask? No, thanks. Okay, I'll stick this here for you. Yeah, thanks, sir. And some hand sanitizer. 5%. But the problem is this, Zach, right? You and I both, compared to all the knowledge there is, we're vastly ignorant. Right? We just, we can't fathom. Exactly. Amen. Amen, Zach. So, so what do we do? We appeal to the one who has e exhaustive knowledge of all things. He's God of the universe, and he speaks through his word. That's why when I say these things, Zach, that's exactly it. So if I came out and I said, look, my opinion is that homosexuality or LGBTQIAPK+, right, is, is just, it's not the best thing in the world. That's my opinion. That's what it seems like to me. That would be a lot different. What we're saying is this, the way that God has created things, the order of the universe. Now I got to wait for Zach. He's got, his, he's on his phone. I love Zach, by the way. I really do. He is a nice guy. He reminds me of the same guy I used to play poker with, man. It's eerie. It really is. We used to play Texas Hold'em. Dude, don't tell me that, man. Now I'm like tripping out. Really? You're not as good as I was, though, I bet. Now look, Zach, here's the thing, okay? Why, Zach, why, 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 why are you holding down the truth and unrighteousness? Why are you trying to why are you trying to arbitrarily determine what's good and what's bad when you acknowledge that you hardly have any knowledge? See, the difference between Zach and I is I admit that, but then I appeal to the one who has told us that, listen, homosexuality is a sin. It's unnatural. It goes against God's order, right? And we're out here saying, listen, we love those people in that community, in that group. We do think, um, you know, my friends, we have friends that have been saved out of that community. They can be saved. That's why we come out and we tell them these things. But Zach, is, he's coming up with an arbitrary standard to try to determine right and wrong according to his own assumptions. And the person he sees in the mirror, who he is calling God, he's trying to come up with these things based on that. But why would you do that, Zach? Why? Why? Why would you do that? And you heard me. But look, Zach, you know why? It's because of what it says in John chapter 3. It says this right here. John chapter 3. It says, and this is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world, meaning truth, meaning... Zach, did you know that you don't think black lives... You Put it this way. Because you've denied God... What did you just say? Yeah, I'm going to say it. Because you deny God, because you tried to push away the standard that comes from God, God's Word, you have no argument or basis for why black lives matter. I know you say that, Zach, but what I'm saying is you have no basis for that. What would you, what, what's, in other words, what's your best argument as a non-Christian? Now, don't, don't use the Bible, because you can't, because you're not a Christian. What's the best argument for saying that black lives matter? I'll give you some time, man. Did they watch Jeopardy when they were y'all's age? Y'all watch Jeopardy? Was it just me? Am I, you know, remember the music? They'd always play the music in a time like this. He's thinking about it, you know. That music would go great right now, by the way. So Zach's thinking, why? This is a great Jeopardy question, right? Without using Christianity as a basis, explain why black lives matter. And then we play the music, right? Is 
Zach, at least you didn't try it. You know why? Because there's nothing out there to use that is any with any meaning. Here's the beauty of it, okay? The irony of this is, okay, Christians provide the basis for why black lives matter. It's because they're made in God's image. Black people are made in God's image. That's why here's the inconsistency of a non-Christian. They'll say black lives matter. I don't know why, they just do. Everybody says they do, so they must, they must matter. That's the best they can do. But that doesn't provide any inherent weight to someone who comes out and says, well, I don't think they do. What if somebody came out and said, well, I don't, I don't think they do. And you're saying, well, I do think they do. But none of you were Christians. Neither one of you are Christians. And at that point, both of you have a valid argument, an equally valid argument, because it's both arbitrary. But what we're saying is the way that God has ordered the universe, morality is not arbitrary. Morality is not relative. Morality comes from God. So whenever, ladies, maybe you can help us. Now, it's a hard question. It is. It is. In fact, it's an impossible. I have to admit outright, it's not possible to have a good answer to what I'm about to ask you. But try it anyways, right? So if you are not a Christian, are y'all Christians? I'm Catholic. Is that an issue? Well, yeah, you're not a Christian then. Are there, are you guys, any other? <laughs> right, we're not a Christian. But I'm a Catholic. That's right, that's what I'm, yeah, you're a Catholic. But no, Catholics say that Christians are anathema. They're anathematized. They're under a curse. Because they believe salvation by faith alone. Man, that's in the Second Vatican. That's in the First Vatican Council. That's in the Council of Trent. 1540, Council of Trent. Let him, anyone who says you're saved by faith alone, be an anathema. That's according to your own council. They sure did. Now, ma'am, yeah, just do a little more research on your history, okay? Now, that's not the issue, though. That's not the question. Okay? What about the others? Any other Christians... Christians, no, no, okay. So Catholics could actually be included in this, in a sense, because they would hold to, you know, the Bible, at least when it's convenient, okay? However, here's the thing, okay? When it's convenient. Catholics like the Bible when it's convenient. Kind of like Zach does, you know, Zach's like, well, I can't appeal to the Bible here. And I see that. That's good, Zach. That's good that Zach knows it. Zach's great, man. Zach reminds me of Zach. Okay, look, ladies, now here's the thing. Why is it, why would you say black lives matter? Why do black lives matter? Yeah, I just asked the question. Yeah. Okay, give me an argument for why people have inherent dignity. That's not something that provides inherent dignity. Inherent dignity. What do you mean she's right? Zach, come on, man. Look, she's saying, why do black lives matter? Well, because black people live like us. Black people live like in society. Well, that doesn't mean they matter. Cockroaches live in our society. We have birds that live in our society. I mean, there's a lot of things that are living in our society. Where do black people derive their value from? Amen, yes. Amen, yes. They matter because they're made in God's image. Amen. No, if you're not a Christian. See, if you're a non-Christian, you have no basis. You just said black people don't matter. No, that's why I record things, too. That's why I record things, too. Chaz, did you hear that? What they're, so, so I know it's hard for them to follow the arguments. I don't know why. You know, it's, it really is. It's like selective hearing, you know. It's kind of like the epidemic. They act like Donald Trump. You can tell they act, they've been watching Trump too many times. They, they're Trump supporters. Right, Chaz? You probably said, yeah, they, these guys are Trumpers. Never, it, because why am I saying that? Because look, it's like they hear one word and they're like, racist, racist, right? It's like, wait a minute, whoa, 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 whoa. What are we saying here? We're saying that the only people who can actually justify why black people matter are the Christians. That's, that's all we're saying. Only Christians have a basis for why black people matter. It's because they're made in God's image. If you're not a Christian, you have no argument or basis for why they matter. Black lives matter to me. And oh, okay. So they don't really matter. Like, so it's arbitrary. So it's arbitrary. 
Okay, y'all see the problem there? Y'all see what he's saying? So, so see, as a Christian, I can say black lives matter, period, because they're made in God's image. Doesn't matter what country, doesn't matter who says it. I don't care if everybody in the universe came against me and said they don't matter. I could still say as a Christian, they matter. Why? Because they're made in God's image. What this guy is saying, is he not, sir? Oh yeah, well I was just asking. I don't wanna I don't wanna misrepresent your statement. But what you're saying you. what you're saying is this guy can say they matter, another guy can say they don't matter, and both of you are right. No, it's not a it's Oh, so now you're appealing to something outside of yourself. No 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 no. So this it's it's really it's like if you say you like cheesecake. If like if you say cheesecake is good, right? So black lives matter is the same thing as me saying cheesecake is good. Okay. Let yeah, I am. I just I was just letting everyone hear that. Black Lives Matter to him is saying the same you, thing as cheesecake is good. Okay. You want there to be, you want value to be an objective fact. You it is. It is. To say that it yeah. is an objective fact that X matters. Yeah, black people matter. It's objectively true that black people matter because God has given them, He's made them in His image. That's right. People who don't believe in God don't accept that. Here's the problem that you're having right now, okay? I don't care if they say they don't believe in God. Number one, they do believe in God. They're suppressing the truth and unrighteousness. Number two, it doesn't matter if they say they don't believe in God. They're still not the ones that determine whether or not a black person has value. God is. So it doesn't matter if they do say that because it's not going to change the game. The reality is, is the value that they have comes from, a, from, from God. Even if everybody objected to that, it would, they would still have value. See, what you're doing is, if you lived in a society, and again, like 1940 Nazi Germany, unfortunately, this guy, if he lived there, he would say, yeah, Jews don't have any value. Why? Because our society says they don't. Most people out here, they're saying they don't. Therefore, let's kill them. No, I would say... Yes, it's arbitrary. I would say that I, I value them, and you should be And it, you can say, oh... Well, but that's, 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 a, that's... It's just an opinion, right? Well, I can't hear it. Say, say, say what you're saying. Yeah, his, yeah, his thing is based on will. No, I'm saying, look, our, our standard comes from God. And not just in the realm of whether or not, and, and I'm bringing up Black Lives Matter because obviously that's a very culturally relevant issue, but it's to demonstrate it's not just in this area. This is, this is how it is in every single area of whatever, whether it's culture, whether it's morality. When you give up God as the standard, your, your worldview becomes absurd. You cannot, you cannot make sense of your reality. My friend, okay. Let me let's. Well, well, first of all, let's 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 define a few things, okay? First of all, so I I mean, why are you? Why do you? Why do you think that we can't be certain about things? Why do I think you can't be certain? Yeah. Um, well, I I mean, do you think you can ever be absolutely certain about anything? Uh, no, I mean, okay, now, no, 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 wait a minute, wait, wait, I just want to make sure, I don't want to misrepresent you, but you are absolutely certain that you cannot be absolutely certain. No, I'm not absolutely certain. Well, you just said that. All right, you just said you're certain you can't be certain about anything. Oh, no, I'm not absolutely certain about anything, including okay. statements. Okay, but you're absolutely certain about that. No. You're not even absolutely certain about that. So you could be certain about certain things. You see what's going on here, my friends? It's crazy. He said, okay, you can't be absolutely certain about anything. Well, are you certain about that? Yeah, no, I'm not. Why do you have to be certain about it? Well, my friends, okay, so you've been standing here for roughly 10 minutes, and he's been speaking with certainty about a lot of topics. He's, well, you're assuming that there is, so in other words, what I was saying, black, why do black lives matter? You're speaking and you're saying, because of dot, 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 dot. But now you're saying, but I mean, I'm not certain about anything. I'm not, are you certain that black lives matter? They matter to me. Wait a minute. Okay, so a man who says he cannot be certain about anything cannot be certain that black lives matter. Well, how are you certain about it? Because I have certainty that comes from God. See, how the way I have, you know because it's called the law of correspondence. See, the way that God has set up the universe is my brain corresponds to the, ra the realm out here. Because number one, that's the way God's created it. How do you know that? Number two, itself, it's called uh, a priori knowledge. It, it sounds like I'm not certain about anything 100%, and that is the correct view. 
you, for some reason, are certain, and you're just... I mean, no, no, no. Yeah, are you certain about that? Are you certain that I'm saying I'm certain, sir? No, I'm not. I'm not 100 Nonsense. My friends, it's nonsense. Are you certain that I'm even standing here right now? My Are you certain that I'm a... Are you certain... How do you know I'm not a black woman? My Are you certain I'm not a black woman? He's not even certain I'm a... It's crazy, right? Ma'am, yeah, but be nice to me. I'm like the nicest guy out here. Right, uh, so yeah, we're just Christians, Bible-believing Christians. What's that? What's that? Yeah, I'm just a Bible-believing Christian. You can find me on at uh, Twitter, Ryan Denton, Christ in the Wild. Well, because you're recording things and you're trying to make me sound like I said things I didn't, so to protect myself. A rise. Yeah, I know, I know. It's so sad, right? It's so sad. Well, I mean, truth these days is upsetting. I know, I know. We live in a culture, you know, if you said these things like 20 years ago, it'd be like, well, duh, that's common sense. Nowadays, truth is very unsettling to people. Nowadays, when you speak truth, they're like, wait a minute, you're not allowed to say that, dude. You know what I mean? It's like, well, that's just the culture we live in, man. To say that you're unsettled or that you're upset, I mean, that's actually telling me, well, I'm probably doing the right thing because this is a culture, especially on a college campus, right, that doesn't really like truth. I mean, I'm just saying. So how am I certain? Again, it goes back to God. See, see, there's the thing, okay? So, I mean, who would you rather be? Think about it, okay? I'm a Christian. I can say I know for certain that black people have value, that they matter. Why? Because God made them in his image. As opposed to what he's saying is, he's saying, well, I can't be certain that they matter. I can't be certain of any. I can't be certain that even you're not a black woman. I don't know, right? But notice he doesn't live that way. I bet he's got, like, hashtag BLM on all this stuff, right? Well, no, you don't have to be 100% certain to take action. Is that certain? Are you certain about that? No, I don't have to be. I know, he's doing that, I know. Can you believe he says he doesn't, he's not certain? Definitive view of the world and reality based on evidence. Well, go away and study, ma'am. Go away and study. My friends, you're not, my friends, ma'am, just go away. Just go away. You don't have to be here. Go away. Go to class. Go to class. Right, you don't have to be here, my friends. Just go away, everybody. Just you know, here's the thing, okay? No, I can't understand you. You know, you must be sure you know. My friend, look, okay? One at a time, one at a time. Hey, Trevor, Trevor, let me talk to Trevor a little more. So, Trevor, I had a question for you. Okay, now, Trevor. Man, one at a time, one at a time. To be honest with you, and maybe you don't mean it, so that's why I'm gonna let you know. Okay. Feel like you will kind of like. Uh, have a rebuttal for my point, but then you won't let me respond. All right, go ahead and respond. Go ahead and respond. No, I'm you sorry, can Trevor. Ask question, I don't have to What's that? You can ask a question, but I'd like okay. to Okay, now, Trevor, wait a minute. You shouldn't have that. Either. Now, I have a hard time answering because you've given up certainty. So after everything you answer, whatever you tell me, Trevor, I'm going to ask you, are you certain about that? And you're going to have to say no. You don't have, I'm not 100% certain. Are you 100% certain that you're not 100% certain? My friends, don't do that. Don't ever give up certainty. That's nonsense. We don't live that way. We don't think that way. We feel like there are certainties and we, right? So he's very certain about certain things, but then when you press him on, he's like, no, I'm not certain. Christianity is, see, here's the thing, okay? I am certain that you know that God exists. I am certain that that is true. God, that's why I'm certain. You see what I mean? The certainty that I have comes from God. How do you know things? Because God spoke. How do you know he spoke? Because my fr is, okay, so you know what a priori, a priori evidence is? Things that are a priori? Now, Zach, do you know what a priori is? Zach's probably like a... Uh, I don't know if Zach's ever heard that word. It's not a big deal. I mean, a priori means something that you have ingrained in you at the time when you come into the world. That's how you are with God. Everyone out here, it's, okay. it's self-evidential. It's evident. Everything I say that's ingrained in me when I came into the world. There we go. I solved the problem. Now you don't need God. Slow down, Trevor. Now, what's that? Well, I, I just claimed what you claimed. I was born into the world certain of everything I say, I guess. If you can just say the same thing about God. No, it's I not saying that I'm certain about everything, I Trevor. I mean, there are things like... How to get to Mars. I'm not certain how to get to Mars, right? I don't know. I mean, are you certain man can live on Mars or not? I don't know. I mean, I've never... But when we're talking about when we're talking about certain facts, like whether or not a black person has dignity, yes. Why? I'm certain that they do. Why? Because God's word tells me they're made in his image. How do you know that's God's word? Because, because he says it is. How are, how are you certain? It's God breathed.
You have the same Well, problem because, no, 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 God doesn't lie. It's, See the difference between you and I, Trevor? No, it's not. Because it would Wait, be. How do you know it's not the devil? How do you know it's not the devil tricking you? How do you know that, that, that Islam isn't the correct religion and you are One the devil? Out of Those are like four different questions. So let's start with Islam. Okay, brings up Islam. I don't know why he wants to pick on Islam. I'm sorry, Muslims out here, you know. But he brought it up. We'll talk about it. So Islam, in their own book, has an inherent contradiction. Okay, it says that as a Christian, I can go to the book or the Gospels to find out that what the Quran says about the Gospels are true. How so do you I, know that the correct religion is Islam? This guy, man. I was, I was like in the middle of the sentence. I was in the middle of a sentence, Trevor, look. When you go there, it's saying that Jesus Christ died on a cross, which, by the way, is a great, great thing. You know that Jesus Christ died on a cross? You know what that means, that Christ died on a cross? That means there is a, a way to be reconciled to God. How do you know that's not Because God has said that. God, See, God can't lie, my friends. God is the God who speaks. God is the God who can't lie because I have the Holy Spirit that convicts me of truth. Because the, the, Holy, the, the, devil, is a, a, the devil would not speak truth to a Christian. Because I well it's it's uh it's in the devil's nature to act that way that? because God's word tells me that. How do you know that? Because it comes from God. It, God's How do word tells me. My friend, did you have a question by the way? Uh, I was just saying, if you think crucifixion so good, why don't you try yourself? So, uh, why don't I try what myself? Getting crucified. Well, they don't really do that anymore. <laughs> oh, I can easily. I see a few people right here that are willing to do it. Oh, I believe that. Sure, yeah, but they don't. What I'm saying is, sir, they don't. Ha they don't make the construction of like a oh, cross. Sure we can get the materials too. Do they really? So, and you would like to do that, sir? You would be one of the first to do that, no, I guess? No, no. I would like to do that to you. Right, okay. Well, that doesn't surprise me. I mean, that's what the Bible says about unbelievers. That's exactly what, they, what the Bible says. Yeah, my friends, it's not like that's a surprise, right? So when I come out, there's no doubt in my mind that that's exactly what a lot of people probably would like to do to us because we're speaking on behalf of Christ and we're speaking about truth. And again, our culture hates truth. Our culture, our culture hates life. And so Christ is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. Those three things right there are three things that the culture hates. And so I have no doubt, my friend, you're actually, you're actually a great demonstration that what the Bible says is true because the preaching of the cross is foolish the word is actually moronic to those who are perishing so what do you think of the preaching of the cross he says that's foolish and not only is it foolish but I want to crucify you too well yeah I mean that's exactly what the scriptures say so my friend when you say deserve though based on what standard are you saying that yeah but I don't understand like that's not a basis for why someone's so because you hate someone they should be crucified Right, that's what I'm saying. So why, why just me, and why not other people you hate? Because you annoy me, and I'm fairly certain everyone here is. My friend, did you not just walk, like literally, just walk up though? No, I just. Okay, okay, good, okay, good. So I'm glad you heard some of this. Yeah. So my friend, I, I really have to ask you, man. Like, like, what? Why are you having a like? You're having a bad day. No, I'm having a pretty good day. So why are you, why are you wanting to crucify somebody? I mean, things aren't really going your way, you know, when you actually, today's the day where you go out and you, you're telling somebody with the Bible you want to crucify them. I mean, what's that about? You know what I'm saying? Have the Bible, you just don't seem to be reading it very well. Well, I'm preaching it. Yeah, that's a good point. I'm preaching it. All right, cool. Yeah. I still think you should be crucified. Yeah, but see, I understand you say that. They said the same about Christ. It's, it's like, okay, whatever. My point is, is this, though, okay? You're not the judge. You're not the judge. No, not you're not incapable of right judgment. Your thinking's off, man. Your thinking's been skewed. You've been brainwashed by your culture. Yeah, you've been brainwashed by your culture. You've been indoctrinated by your culture. Wait, one person at a time, man. One person at a time. One, now, you see what I'm saying? No, not unfortunately. No, the last two semesters I haven't. But I tell you this, okay? I, I wouldn't either. That's true. But look, okay, look. No, I never said anything about pregnancy pills, and I certainly, I really haven't even been yelling. Last March, bro. Last March. Last March. I wasn't here last March, ma'am. I wasn't here last March. But you do, he does this to get a rise out of y'all. I know, so go away, ma'am. Go away. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Right? What's up, my man? My man has a question here. Uh, yeah, Ryan, talk to her. Talk to her. Chill her out. Go ahead, though, sir. I'm so sorry about that, by the way. It's very, very rude. So you're not part of, like, a Baptist... Calvinist, you're just Bible reading Christian? Cal who said Calvinist? Yeah, I'm the, I'm Calvinist? Not, I don't know. Wait a minute. Who out here is a Calvinist? Wait, wait, wait. I have a question. What is your definition? Calvinist? No, no, no. What is your definition of Calvinist? 
Amen. That's right. Y'all heard that, right? That's right. Catholics are definitely not Christian. The Catholics are not saved at all, period, ma'am. What do you mean saved by the same blood? Okay, one at a time, one at a time, one at a time, okay? So we had a question on the table. What kind of Christian? And then he said Calvinism? What is that? Calvinism? Yes, sir. You think I'm a Calvinist? No, sir. Okay. Okay. So here's the thing, okay? What you know about me is this. I'm not a Roman Catholic. Now, why am I not a Roman Catholic? Because I believe the Bible. That's simple, right? The Bible says you're saved by faith alone, through Christ alone. The Catholics deny that. I don't know how much you know about Catholics, but that's fact. Have you investigated Lutheranism? Yes, I have. I love, I love Luther. I love John Calvin. But you're not. I love John Calvin. I love Luther. I, I, yeah, there's a lot of guys. No, nah, you know, it's funny. I mean, there's some things I disagree with Calvin on. There's some, there's a lot that I agree with Calvin on. I don't follow John Calvin. I follow Jesus Christ. But John Calvin interpreted the Bible in a way that was consistent with what Scripture shows, I believe. Right? So are you a Calvinist? No, sir. I'm not. Why are you not a Calvinist? I don't know enough about Calvinism. What, what kind of Christian are you? Not a Christian at all. Not even Baptist. Okay, so my friends, here's the question. Are you a Christian? Okay, what kind of Christian are you? There are different types. Yeah, there's the uh, there's the false Christ. Christ says there will be many false Christ. He says there will be many who come to me on that day and they'll say, Lord, Lord, I knew you. But he'll say, no, I never knew you. He'll say, depart from me. I never knew you. So there's a there. So it's very important. I'm not saying you have to have like a certain denomination. But what I'm saying is that when you're talking about what Christianity is, my friends, we have to know what in the world we're talking about. So it sounds like you're just like an umbrella Christian and you're like everybody who wants to say Jesus Christ. Hey, welcome to the fold where the Bible says, wait, 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 wait. That's not true. What they're doing in their inherently in their doctrine are anathemas against people who believe what the Bible say. Make sure you spread this on the camera. There's an anathema that goes back to the Council of Trent in 1540 that says if you believe you're saved by faith alone, through grace alone and Christ alone, they, you are under the curse of God. If you say that the scriptures are our only infallible rule of faith and practice, which, you know, Christians should say and believe, they'll say you're an anathema. So it's, what I'm saying, though, ma'am, is, you know, we have to we have to know the we, we, we want to look. This is the most important question that you can ask. Am I right with God? How do I know I'm right with God? What does God's word teach? And so when you're talking to people, let's say, who are Roman Catholics, you're not flattering them and patting them on the back so that they wind up in hell. And they're going to look at you and say, wait a minute. Why didn't you tell me I was never saved? We were friends, but you said I was a Christian. I turn out I'm in hell right now because I wouldn't say by faith. Yes, sir. How are you? Amen. So the Bible says this. It's very, very, very complicated. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe in Him, His work, what He did, who He said He was. From the Scriptures, yes. And you will be saved. You don't do that. Like I just said, believe in Christ. Where do we find out about Christ? In His Word. Where do I find out Christ? Christ tells me in His Word. He tells me things that the Roman Catholics deny. Right? And by the way, no Catholic would want to... Cru well, I take that. Catholics do like crucifying Protestants and burning them too. So I understand. Go ahead, though, sir. So are you preaching that your faith with the Bible confirms... God. Not not saying God doesn't I'm saying right. with your faith. Yes. Is your foundation for why everything you're saying through yes. is true. My man, I love that you know here's the here's what I say, okay? I am a Christian because Christianity is true. Period. It's true. Okay? So whether I believe in it or not does not do anything about Christianity as far as like okay, it's not like an arbitrary, it's not a relative thing. It's, in other words, it's true for me, but you can believe in whatever. No, no, no. It's true, period. Therefore, I believe it. I believe in the, because God had mercy on me, he saved me, right? But what I'm saying is I'm a Christian because Christianity is true. And, and, and the phrase is this, and I know I don't want to be too complicated, but I'm going to break it down. It's called the impossibility of the contrary. See, it's impossible for any religion contrary to Christianity or any worldview contrary to Christianity to be consistent both in what it teaches and how it practices that teaching. 
I'm very close-minded. Yes, sir. Just like you are. Everybody's close-minded. Yeah, everybody has this bias or an agenda that they naturally are on. Like this guy's the most biased. Na I mean, is, is anybody out here more biased than this guy who comes out with his... I mean, he comes out and openly states, hey, man, I would love to kill you, right? But yeah, he's a Catholic. But that's how Catholics act. Something. If you see the heart of a real Catholic, it's right here. That's how they act. Right? Now, I know that not all Catholics act that way. Not all Catholics act that way. Yes. So, well, well, it's the heart that I used to have as an unbeliever also. A heart of an unbeliever is naturally going to oppose the things of God. So whether they're Catholic or Buddhist or Muslim or whatever, or, uh, or here's a big one, the Church of Latter-day Saints, the Mormons, the Jehovah's Witnesses, those are probably worse than even Catholics. I don't know. They're up. It's like neck and neck. But my friends, the reality is this, okay? If you're an unbeliever, you have a heart that needs not only like change, but you need a new heart, the Bible says. That you need a new heart, and God can do that. That's why I've come today to tell you that God can take out your heart of stone, which means you have a heart that's dead towards Him, it's cold towards Him, you don't have any feeling towards God, you're cold and sensitive towards the things of God, you hate the things of God. God can take out that heart and give you a heart that the Bible calls flesh, so that you're, you're sensitive to God, you love God, you love the things God loves, you hate the things God hates. That's what it is to be made a new creation. And that's what happened to me as a Christian. That's what happened to my friends or the ones who are here today. Tony, you know, these guys, you too. That's happened maybe. Yes. Amen. My man. Why? Now, y'all hear what he said? So you should use God's standard and what God says over and against our standard and what we say and even what our culture says. And why is that? Because men are prone to make mistakes. Cultures are prone to make mistakes. Happens all the time. So when you stand on the Word of God, you can never make a mistake because the Word of God never makes a mistake. That's why, that's why it's our standard that we should live by. Amen, dude. That's a great way to summarize that. Amen. Was there a, quite, a hand up somewhere? Anybody hand? I saw a hand. No? No? Maybe I'm saying things. Or like our guy over here, you know, he says you can't be certain of anything. I'm not certain whether or not I saw a hand. But I am certain that black lives matter because God creates them in his image. I'm not certain whether or not, you know, somebody raised their hand, like I said, but I am certain that 2 plus 2 equals 4. Why? Because God has created the universe so that 2 plus 2 operates in that way. It means 4. Right? I know for a certain, I, I didn't know for certain whether or not somebody had their hand up. Last illustration, I know it's getting old, but here's the other thing. I know for certain that God makes you a male or a female, and you can't change that. You cannot change that. I'm sorry. You can't change it. Now, you can try. You can get the surgeries. You can get the hormone shots, whatever. You can't change your chromosomes, you can't change who you are, and we all know what it's like, you know, when you see a guy who's trying to be a girl, and you're like, oh man, he's not doing it very well. Or a girl trying to be a guy, and you're like, oh, she's not doing it very well, right? We know that, why? Because it's unnatural. It's not how God has created you. So embrace how God has made you, whether you're male or female, rejoice, embrace that. Embrace Zach, not that you're made to be a gay person. My friends, are there any queers out here, by the way? Any queers? Jesus Christ, just said gay. No, it's quit LGBTQ, sir. It's queer. Oh my goodness, you don't even know the my friends. Now, how ignorant do you have to be? Gay and queer are different. Yes, but queer is an. Oh, I can't believe this guy's doing this, my friend. I'm not talking about the gays right now. I ask, is anyone queer? Two different. My friend is LGBTQ. I'm asking about the Q. Are there any queers out here? Are there any Qs out here? Man, what a... My friend, you're so condescending to the queers. What's up with that? Did everybody get that on video? The guy's making fun of the queers. He's saying they're not real. If I'm going to be real with you, that whole diagram confuses me. I'm not going to judge anyone by where they stand. Well, thank you for being honest. It confuses everybody out here. That's why it's kind of funny. LGBTQIAPK+. We're like, what does that mean? Nobody. I got it on camera. I got it. I got it. Christ in the Wild Ministries on YouTube. My friends, what does that mean? We don't know. Nobody knows. My friend, that's my point. When you give up God as a standard, your culture becomes almost laughable we're now you're, you're coming up with letters and we're like nobody knows what those letters mean and you're saying the whole thing confuses me and now you're getting mad at me because i use the same the same word queer that the homosexual community actually identify as i mean we're all confused we're like what do we even say and i have to admit i don't know either but i know that as a black woman i can get away with saying that so my friends my friends well no i identify it that's how i identify exactly Amen. Thank you. You're seeing now you're seeing it. 
You're seeing it. Just because I say things, exactly, my friends, the guy's seeing it. Just because you say something with your mouth does not make you that thing. So, for instance, when you meet someone who says you're an athe they're an atheist, no, they're not. They're not an atheist. There's no such thing as an atheist or an agnostic. There's no such thing as a good person. No, man, just because you say it with your mouth doesn't make you that thing. Right? And you of all persons should know that you're not a good guy, right? I know. Okay, at least you know that. Now, my friend, I know you came out hating me, right? But now you're starting to love me. No, not. Now, now, what does this say? Okay, my friends, are there any questions about what Christ came to do when he came to earth? Are there any questions about this? What did Christ do when he came to earth? You know what he says he did? He said he came to set the captives free. You know what that means? My friends, okay, look. I got a guy right here. He said that he would love to crucify me. His words, right? You admit that? He would love to cru He would love. He came out and he said, man, if I had the ability, I would crucify you and hang you on a cross, right? I get it. Okay? But if you've ever, my friends, if you've ever wondered what is a captive, my friends, behold the man who's a captive. He is a captive to sin. He's a captive to hatred. He's enslaved. He's enslaved to hate people. He's enslaved to hate God. So what he needs today is Christ. That's what I said. What did Christ come to do when he came to earth? He came to set this guy, if he comes to Christ in faith, he came to set captives free from their sins, free from their evils, free from their hatred, free from their madness. This guy is mad. This guy literally is kind of mad, right? I mean, lunatic. I mean, to say that you would crucify somebody in front of everybody. I mean, dude, either you're having a really bad emotional day or you just mean. Yeah. So it's a common thing to crucify. You see that, my friends? He said, well, among our age, it's just common to talk about crucifying Christians. I mean, that's common talk, right? He's like, hey, I'm in a Facebook group, and the group's called Let's Crucify Christians. He didn't say that, but I'm saying, I mean, like, you go to that extreme, right? He's basically saying, hey, amongst our culture, amongst our age group, I mean, it's, we always talk about killing Christians. Well, I wonder how this is going to end up, right? I wonder how this is going to end up. When you have Joe Biden, here it is. There it is. Joe Biden. Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, and a lot of people who say black lives matter, but then when they go to the abortion clinic, they say kill the black babies. What's up with that? What's up with that? Why would you, my friends, look, when I say black lives matter, only for adult black males who live in Minneapolis, Minnesota, who probably died of a fentanyl overdose. When I say black lives, now look, that's true. When I say that, okay, when I say that, and we all know that's true, by the way. It's not like it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's true, okay? However, look, as a Christian, I can say this. What happened to George Floyd was not right. That's not right. And you say the same thing. But how come you don't say the same thing? And how come y'all don't say the same thing? I'm just, you know, if you're okay with abortion. How come you don't say the same thing at the abortion clinic when babies who are black are being killed every single day in this country? You're a hypocrite. That's why. You're a hypocrite, right? And so what's going on here is this. So here's the problem, okay? So what I'm saying is this, okay? In our culture today, when you're talking about when you're talking about death, see it doesn't surprise me that you're saying let's kill the Christians when you yourself are okay with killing babies. If you're okay with killing babies, why in the world would you be upset if somebody started killing Christians when Christianity is about truth? It's about life, it's about light, it's about knowledge, it's about Christ saving sinners, and those things you're opposed to. I'm not about crucifying all Christians, I'm about crucifying you, because people like you piss me the fuck off when right. they come over to right. places like this trying to force their beliefs, trying right. to force their beliefs on everyone else. Sir, why are you judging me? Because you're judging me. I have the, as much of a Wait, 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 wait. No, you shut the fuck no, up. No, 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 why are you judging me? Why are you judging me, sir? He's been cutting me off the whole day. He's cutting me off and he's judging me. Wait, 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 wait. Now y'all are judging me. Wait, 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 wait. Why? Wait, so y'all are judging me? Everyone's judging you. Right. My friends, that's right. It's impossible not to judge. We all judge. The question is this. See, the question is this. Are you judging with right judgment like Christ says, John 7, 24? He says to judge with right judgment. With my Bible, and whenever I'm preaching the Word of God in truth, I know for a fact I am judging with right judgment. So whenever I'm calling you a hypocrite for saying black lives matter, unless they're at the abortion clinic or unless they're black conservatives or unless they're black police officers, I'm calling you a hypocrite. 
Why? Because a Christian can say Black Lives Matter, even Kamala Harris. I, I disagree with that lady on every front, but I can say she has dignity, she has value, she has, she has worth, and it would be wrong to, you know, hate her or whatever because of her skin color. That'd be wrong because God created her in his image, right? But see, a non-Christian has no standard. A non-Christian does whatever their culture tells them to say. My friend, you would have been the first one killing Jews in Nazi Germany in 1940, I promise. You would have been the first one, if you had, if he lived in the 1800s in Mississippi, this guy would have been a major slaveholder, I promise. Why? Because he does whatever his culture tells him to do. Yeah, and in those cultures, they told him to kill Jews, the other one said to have slaves. This guy would have done that, you would have done that too, man. And I'm saying that because that's what happens when you give up the standard that God gives us. It leads to absurdity, it leads to arbitrariness, and it leads you down the wrong road, man. And eventually, worst of all, you're going to stand before God, and it's going to lead to hell unless you turn to Jesus Christ in faith. Unless you've been born again, which means turning to Christ in faith. Being born again means the supernatural power of God coming upon you, changing you. My man, you need to be changed. You have a filthy mouth, you have a filthy heart, you hate your neighbor. I mean, that's sick. You hate babies? You hate black babies? Oh, so now you're just pinning a picture. Now, yes, ma'am. Did you have a question? Yes, I actually did. I heard earlier that you were talking about how sexual assault and rape is justified. Would you like to go into that a little bit? I would love to. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so my friends, this is why I record everything. Okay. Because when she says, I heard that you said sexual assault and raping people are justified. Now, first of all, okay, now who told you that? Okay, so that's called Very False Witness. You can see the video later, Christ in the Wild Ministries on YouTube. Go ahead and check it out, okay? Now, here's the reality. What, what we were saying, and I'll get you a question, is this, okay? And let, it goes back to the same thing with Black Lives Matter. Only Christians have a valid basis for saying that sexual assault and raping a woman is wrong. Why? Because women are made in God's image. It's wrong to rape them. If you hold a macro Darwinian evolution, which says that, that uh, good to see you again, man, which says, um, have we seen each other? Man, man, I'm so confused. There's a lot of things I'm not certain about, right? But when it comes to Black Lives Matter, I'm certain that they do matter. Why? Because God made them in His image, etc. Women have value. Why? Because God made them in His image. Man, the point is, is this. I was actually saying, unfortunately, I myself was sexually assaulted two weeks ago. I'm part of the Me Too movement now. I really was. You can find that at YouTube on Christ the Wild Ministry. I really was. Sexually assaulted. Was not a good feeling. It wasn't like a big, you know, but it was like, man, it made me feel icky. It really did, okay? Why is that wrong? Well, because I am made in God's image, right? Someone who holds to macro Darwinian evolution has to say that everything evolves by chance and random processes over time. Everything comes from stardust, volcanoes, things like that, primordial puddle of different, different ingredients, okay? And over time, those things evolve into what we call men and women. However, if you hold a macro Darwinian evolution, by the way, I've taken a lot of classes long time, 10 years ago, whatever, when I was in college, but it's a really interesting thing because they'll say, if you hold to macro Darwinian evolution, the purpose of life is what? No, we'll talk about that in a minute. Reproduction. According to macro Darwinian evolution, it's reproduction. So what's funny is, okay, women, according to macro Darwinian evolution, you can't really have a basis, according to macro Darwinian evolution, for why, according to macro uh, Darwinian evolution, you're wondering why I'm saying it over and over, because I don't want her to chop this video up, okay? Because she will do that, because she has an evil heart. That's what they do, right? But what we're saying is this, okay? If you hold a macro Darwinian evolution, then the purpose of life is reproduction. Women, according to macro Darwinian evolution, evolve from rocks. Rocks don't have value. Rocks don't have dignity. Women have no inherent dignity, value, or worth, according to macro Darwinian evolution. So, you put two and two together. Why would it be wrong if you hold to macro Darwinian evolution? I have to say it again, again, again. Make sure my camera's on, too. Oh, wait, so you're saying you're white because I see you're wearing a wig. Oh, yes, yes. She has Greatest no wife in the world. Whatsoever. What is she talking about? Okay, maybe, maybe I'm not expecting. I'm like, dude, I'm like, I want to like knock my, ma'am, I was saying according to macro Darwinian evolution, I don't believe in, I'm, I'm sorry, you're right, I should have said that up front. Macro Darwinian evolution is opposed to the Bible, the Bible's opposed to that. But you were just saying, like, why don't we go with this, so. Why don't we go with what? No, no, no. I was pointing out that only a Christian has a basis for why raping a woman is wrong. Whereas on the contrary, if you hold a macro Darwinian evolution, what's that? Yes, only a Christian has a basis for why it's wrong to rape a woman. 
Well, without God, you don't have morals and you don't have ethics. You have arbitrariness. You have arbitrariness that comes from society, but society has been wrong on a lot of moral issues. Right? I have a question. So what do you mean by that? Free will leads to evil? I never said that. Well, I don't know what that means. Yeah, I don't either. Good question, though. Yeah, I don't. I didn't write that. I have no idea. Yeah, does that make sense? Everybody good on that? Because, yeah, clarity is important. We want to be clear out here. Yeah, so I don't hold to macro Darwinian evolution. The point is, is that when you give up Christianity, now she says... Like, not everyone believes in God. Yes, they do. They everyone do, ma'am. Ma'am, I'm a black woman. Are you allowed to tell that to a black woman? But you're not a black woman. Wait a minute, I just said I'm a black woman. You can't change your race. I told you I'm a black woman. But that's not how this works. Yes, it is. I said it. It's I'm a black it woman. It's not how it works. I, yes, it is. I can say whatever I want on that thing. If I'm a black woman. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm a black woman. But you're not. Ma'am, ma'am. Ma'am, and, and you According can't, ma'am. What you believe in, you're, you're saying that being transgender is wrong. I think she's so racist. Why are you, like, why are you saying that she's you're racist? Woman? That means you're being, she's she's talking to the black woman this way. She's that's talking to a black that's woman that's this way. Very in. condescending. So how does that make sense? Now, ma'am, look, you don't think I can change things by what I say? Dude, that's not the point, though. You're no, the point is this. Right can I be a black woman? Can I be a black woman? No, you can't. You can't be an atheist either. Just because you say you're an atheist does not make you an atheist. My friend, she's made in God's image. She lives in God's universe. God tells us that what can be known about God has been pl made plain to her. It's been made clear to her because God has made that clear to her. But she's suppressing the truth and unrighteousness. You're not an atheist. You're not an agnostic, just like I'm not a black woman. Just because I say it with my mouth doesn't make me a black woman. Just because you say it with your mouth does not make you an atheist or an agnostic. You know there are no such thing as atheists or agnostics. And you're basically saying you were. But the point is, is this. And by the way, that's not God. You know, it's Muslims. Muslims, you know, they treat their Quran like God. That's not God. That's God's word. But that itself is not the essence of God. No, the, no God's words are not thrown. Not to God, it's not. Yeah, no, my man, look, look, look. So this is, this is not, that's not, look, my man, my man, my man, my man. This is not God, though. This is not God. So you're making an idol out of, a, out of, a, out of this. It's the content that's in here that's God's word. Well, no, hey, hey, you can't hey, hey, throw on, the on, content. No, sir. You Which can't throw the that? content. This is the Bible. This okay, is the Bible. no, no, no. What so, my friends, is... hold on. We're in the middle of a talk right Yeah, and you're not so, right. So, my friends, my friends, okay, look. Oh, my God. Okay, look. Don't. You just, you just took God's name in vain. Damn right, I did. Okay, okay. What's up, man? I'm said, sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. So, I just got so, here, but is your argument against uh, Darwinism and liberalism in general? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, because it, it's contrary to what God's word says. And you're saying if you subscribe to Darwinism and liberalism, then you have no morals or, or any basis for having them. But can't you argue that uh, if you look at it altruistically... Can you go get my water for me? You could use the black one? aim of having like, the greater good for humanity as your aiming for to form your morals. And so altruism could be a non-religious way of having morals. Here you go, sir. Yeah, thank you, sir. Appreciate it, man. So... Uh, yeah, that's it. I appreciate your demeanor. I mean, very calm. I like that. It's a good question, too. That's your argument against greed, couldn't you argue that if you're someone who's an uh, atheist, couldn't you argue that uh, a way to justify rape is being bad because, yeah, that's uh, bad for the woman uh, mentally and for a social state. Therefore, that's bad for society at large. And, yes. Uh, that's not based on religion, but that's still a way of justifying Yeah, society. yeah. So what's funny, though, is this. Okay, so that's still a pragmatic argument, right? So you're saying it's wrong because the benefits of that action would be that they're not, they're not conducive to, like, positive effects. So you're saying in and of herself, the woman has no, like, real value. It just so happens that what you do to the woman is going to turn out to be bad. Therefore, you shouldn't do that to the woman. Whereas if raping a woman turned out for the good of society, then you would have to say, well, according to that system that you're bringing up, it would have to be okay to do that. You said it, baby? altruism is based on facts and, uh, like, it's proven things. Well, no, altruism is... I would disagree with that, because altruism and facts are, are two different... They're, they're on, like, two different planes. Altruism is more of a... I mean, how are you defining alt altruism? Like, doing nice things to people? Uh, I guess optimizing for the best not to society. Okay, so so when you're when you're doing that though, like what's the por what's the point of that? Yeah, but why 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 do you want to improve lives? Like who cares? But I mean, but who cares? Why do you, but why do you care? Yeah, I mean, like what's the point of that? 
don't believe in the Quran. The Quran? Yeah. Uh, and it, so you guys, are, so 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 the Quran, as a book, exists. Obviously, yeah, it, it exists. So so, uh, my friends, let's do this, okay? So so, my name's Ryan Denton. You find me on Twitter. And I'm saying that because I'd love to follow you guys and get to know you guys if you like that. Okay, you can email me at Christinthewild at gmail.com. You can find me on Facebook, all that stuff, right? Now don't be trolling me because I'll find that out. Come on, just don't troll. Like grow up, you know? I mean that happens, I know what to do with it. It's not gonna be a surprise, it happens, no big deal, okay? But if you like to if you like to get into contact, by all means, let's do that. Hey Ryan, will you get some track? Will you get the tracks right there? So so my friends, okay, look. We're going to come back tomorrow, by God's grace, and I'm still going to get your question. I'm going to wrap this up, though. We're going to come back tomorrow, and we're going to come back uh, maybe next week. There's a lot of stuff I didn't get to bring up today that I got to bring up tomorrow, like political, social stuff that I need to talk about, like topics like that. And I wanted to get to it. We had some good questions today, so I didn't have time. So tomorrow, I'm going to be able to get some to some uh, really good social and political topics that I forgot, you know, we just couldn't get to today. So make sure to tell your friends. Make sure to come out tomorrow. There's really, there's a lot of interesting and really critical topics that we need to talk about, okay, about, about certain things, okay? And it's going to be, uh, you know, it's going to be a little controversial, but I think we're all in college. You know, y'all in college, we can handle that. Uh, but again, my name's Ryan Denton, and I, I, I come out here. I love God. My friend, this is Ryan. He goes to school here. This guy, the Lord uses him, and Chaz, okay? And you look like a Christian, too. So my friends, look, this is, this, this campus belongs to Jesus Christ. So if you're in Christ today, be encouraged because this campus is his already. Even if everybody was out here was an unbeliever, Christ owns this universe that you live in, okay? So be encouraged. You're on the right side. Keep pressing on. Keep fighting the good fight of faith, okay? If you're not in Christ, be warned that what you've heard about Christ today, what you've heard about truth today, my friends, if you don't respond to this in faith, you'll be held accountable for it on the day of judgment. So it's a very dangerous thing to hear about truth, and you don't respond to that in faith because it's going to be more perilous now that you've heard it than it would have been had you never heard, right? So turn to Jesus Christ in faith. Look to Christ that your sins would be forgiven. Okay, and if you want more information about that, please talk to me. Come and talk to me. And we'll talk, you know, just one-to-one. -one. Won't be yelling and all that stuff, okay? It's just one-on-one -on -one stuff. My friend Ryan, you can talk to him too. And Dorothy's out here somewhere. She's a nice British lady. Has a great accent, okay? So in other words, we're here for you. We care about you. We love God. We love our neighbor. You can hate us. We love y'all. I know not everybody hates us, so God bless those who don't hate us. God bless those who do hate us. And we'll see you tomorrow by God's grace, okay? And in the meantime, I'll get... There's Dorothy right here, by the way. Dorothy's really sweet. So... Uh, 11 o'clock. So by the way, I got some, I have gospel tracks and this comes from us and it's the summary of basically what we're talking about today. There's more information about us on the back, okay? There's good news. Jesus Christ has come to save sinners. All right, so come get one. I'm going to give them to Ryan and Ryan can hand them out. And uh, in the meantime, I'll try to, I'll try to hand Thank out. You. Hey, thanks brother. God bless you, man. I appreciate it. 11 o'clock. 11. Yeah, it's good seeing y'all. Y'all are really encouraging. Man, the, the, first thing, the first thing that I thought of whenever I walked outside, I was like, oh, shit, it's like Steven Crowder's here. And then, but then I realized. Yeah, yeah. Man, yeah. That's, that's pretty cool, though. Right, 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 yeah. I, I like everything that y'all are doing. Well, I appreciate yeah. it. Thanks I was here for all day. Yesterday. I know, I saw you yesterday. Yeah, yeah that's encouraging. I appreciate it. It's always good to see encouraging faces. Yeah, yeah. So I, I went into class and stuff. I had a class at 11, and like, I saw it, and I really wanted to like, stop by and something to see. And then I was like, but it, like, at 10, it was like mandatory, and I was like, I can't take yeah, that. So, well, but I came back out here, and luckily, and some of y'all were still here, and you're still talking to the same guy. Awesome, and man. Like, cool, dude. So, yeah. Cool. So you probably didn't miss much. We'll come back tomorrow. We'll keep keep doing it. You know, see how it works. Yeah. So I only have class at nine thirty. So we're here. awesome. Hey, hey, man, dude, that'd be great. Some people having a picnic out here. That's exactly. Yeah, what that's we'll be right. Doing right, they are. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. We'll be talking about. Have you covered how the different side of the? Oh, I don't want to bring up Democrats and that stuff because I personally don't believe in political parties. Right. But, okay. Um, yeah, I like to the... think about you know like them exploiting BLM to get elected. And yeah, these, yeah, sure, sure, and, sure. Know, what did those people say? Yeah, these are gospel issues, man. They, they, you're right. They they bear light. You know, we need to bring some light to those issues. So yeah, I'll bring that up tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. I want to hear that. Eleven to eleven to three. Awesome. Yeah, come back, man. All right. What's up, Jeff? I want to hear about that. Tomorrow. Hey, ladies. Good to see y'all again. Hi. Well, Have y'all met, by the way, Dorothy is out here all the time. Yes, I've seen you out here. She's the sweetest lady. Okay, yeah. And they're all sweet. So yeah. Thank you. They are. They're very encouraging, yes. Yeah. Are you going to be here again tomorrow? Mm -hmm. Yes, at uh, 11 to 3. Okay. Yeah, so we'd love to see y'all again.
Made yeah. a lot of new friends, which is very cool. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. You know, this is like a lot of these colleges, especially if you're new or something and you're looking for Christian friends, a lot of times they hang out over here. And so it's great because we're like, oh, yeah, because you can meet Christian groups. Like, there's Christian groups out here, ministries, all kinds of people come out. Yeah, we're part of uh, Chi Alpha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, we uh, I see Chi Alpha a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. How did you get started on this? Well, uh, about 10 years ago, um, no longer than that now, 12 years ago, I saw a guy doing this where I was going to school in Albuquerque. And, uh, and it, it was kind of like this, you know, and he had a Bible and he had some hecklers, you know, but I saw it and the first time I saw it, I was like, I've got to do this. This is so cool. And I'd just been saved, but it took me like seven years before I actually did it. So, and then over, over the course of time, you know, you just get... At first, it's like crazy nerve wracking. Ryan preached today for the first time. Did really well too. Thank you. He did a lot better. I tell you, the first time I preached, it was like five minutes. I was scared to death, and there was like three people listening. So he 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 was like in the lion's den right away. But yeah, it's just I mean, over time, you know, you just kind of you, you it begins to get easier anticipating like the things you'll hear. But the culture is always changing, so the topics change, which is cool, you know, because it's like all right, so. You know, you just kind of bring up certain talking points, but you bring the gospel to light on that. So there's some stuff I haven't even touched that we need to talk about tomorrow. So stuff like that, you know, yeah, but we try to bring the gospel out. Yeah. But thanks again for the encouragement. Yeah, yeah, we, we definitely do that. I saw on your Twitter that you wrote a book too. I did, yes. I've, yeah, yeah, you, hey, it's, well, so it's, uh, I think it's pre order out right now. I have two other ones before this one. That are already out, but this one, this one will be nice. It's like this one is a condensed version of another one I wrote. It's like 80 pages, so it's readable. You know, nowadays you got to write some 80 pages. So, uh, but I, yeah, if you if you see it come out, um, I, the pre-order links on the Twitter. Okay. But I I I think you'd be blessed by it. I mean, I'm biased, but you know, and I don't think the uh, I don't know what they put the price as because I don't have anything to do with that. I think it should be cheap though because it's small. If it's over like 10 bucks, don't buy it. <laughs> but if not. Um, you know, I mean, if you have the money, you know, I don't want to make like the plug like you have to, but yeah, yeah, take a look, nothing else. Yeah, yeah. Some of it will shed light on kind of what we're doing. It's not about this kind of ministry, but it kind of goes in line with that because a lot of times for Christians, the default position when you're talking about evangelism is you gauge it by like how people react to it. So if you get like a lot of bad reaction, it's like, oh man, it's not working, things like that. And it's like, well, yeah, I mean, maybe, you know, like if you're calling everyone like sluts and stuff, that's probably not good. That's not. But if it is, you know, if you're focused on the gospel and you're you're bringing up things that are just not true and you're like, you know, like we try to do and they get mad at that. Well, I mean, then that's different because you see in the Bible that th these things happen to Paul the Apostle, like riots were breaking out way worse than this. People are trying to kill that guy. Uh, and so the question is, well, he was still effective because people still got saved. People do get saved out here. We have seen that. But what if nobody got saved? Well, he would still be effective because we're called to share it. We're called to talk about Christ because the increase and the results belong to God. God gives the increase. You know, we just have to share it and, and hope that God does. But uh, at the end of the day, we just got to do it and be faithful to do it. But, I mean, that's kind of the gist of it in a nutshell. Yesterday, yeah. I was talking to my husband, and I was like, he reminds me of a modern-day Paul. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, if Jesus was able to do this and get skin ripped from the back and put on a cross, yeah. why can't we do it? The worst yeah. that happens is we spit on you. Yeah, I know exactly. I mean, you're not going to get what happened to Christ in our culture. I mean, they could, like the guy says, I, I would love to crucify. Yeah, but he's not going to. Yeah, I'm protected in a lot of ways. So, yeah, those guys had it way worse. Those guys were dealing with, like, a crazy crowd, way hostile. Yeah, I've never had to do that. Yeah. What's up, man? Did we meet before? Yes. I thought so. What was your name? Keaton. Ke Keaton? Keaton. Keaton. All right, dude. I'm Ryan. Hey, nice to see you guys. This is uh, this is Ryan. This is Chaz. Keaton. Have you met them? I... We talked uh, to the Catholic ladies over there. Hey, hey, Trevor, right? Yeah, you remember. Of course I do. I, I love like you, man. You know, dude, that other dude, that was not cool. I would never wish harm upon you. I know. Why not, though? Why? Are you certain about that? Because you said you weren't certain about anything. Because I don't want to. Are you, are you sure you don't want to? Are you certain you don't want I'm, to? I can't. Well, see, I think I can be pretty certain about my mental state. Um, mm. Because that's my experience. That's like the last thing you well, can be certain about. Now listen. True? I can't be certain that I have an actual brain. Well, I guess I could be in the matrix. You can't be certain that you got a brain in your head? No, because you could be in the matrix. And you Dude, could, so how can you be certain that you wouldn't want to kill me? Well, <laughs> sorry. Well, because even if I'm like in the matrix, right? 
I still have my own experience within that, you know. Do you know Ryan, by the way? I appreciate you saying that. No. This is Ryan. This is my friend Ryan. This is Chaz. I'm saying that because they go here. Yeah. Because you'll probably see them. Yeah. You know? And um, we're, we're working on getting a Bible study going. And so... If you want to be involved in that, you gotta give us your email, though. Oh yeah, no, that's not my. Thing. But not you, Trevor. You're not a Christian. Yeah. Chris, non Christians. Why would non Christians go to? A, yeah, you're invited. Don't get me wrong. Well, I know. But why would you want to go? You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm glad you're honest enough to say that. Yeah. You're definitely I'll welcome. Have discussions. Right. Non Christians are welcome. But the reason you know it's cool is the reason Christ tells us to go to the lost is because the lost don't want to come to church until they get saved. And then they're like, yeah, let's go be the God's people. Right? Right? But hey, that's, I, I tell you, man, if, uh, but yeah, we're trying to get a Bible study going. That's where all, hey, tell, let's tell them too. I forgot to tell them. If y'all want to. Oh, that's right. That's right. All of y'all are. Oh, okay. 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 So y'all got like a group going. Awesome. Awesome. We're going to, we got a Bible study we're going to get going. Yeah. It'll have to be like through Zoom or something. But the details aren't settled yet. Or how many hours a day do you spend time that's a great question. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's so like in, in prayer or the word, pray without ceasing. Like how many time do you, like, how many hours do you like study or like read? So, you know, it's funny. Like so I'm not bragging, but honestly, like all of my time, unless I'm with my family is devoted to, or like maybe some friends or something is devoted yeah. to studying. Yeah. Um, but, you know, a lot of that, I want to be in the Word. I want to be praying. So I try to intentionally pray and things like that. Pray and things like that. But I'm just, you know, the thing is, is, yeah, I mean, it's God's grace. You know, before I was saved, I didn't. I hated studying. I hated reading. I hated writing. I was like a crazy just, you know, I just, you know, you, I don't even want to tell you, you know. But uh, the, when the Lord saved me, He gave me a real hunger for learning and for studying. And it was kind of cool because I knew that was supernatural. You know, so... I'm not saying that as like I do this. I mean, I know it's God that gives me the grace to want to study. And some days it's hard, though. I mean, it's not all the time I want to study. But I do a lot of driving, a ton of driving. And so when I'm driving, uh, I try to make sure I'm listening to something, like an audio book or something, you know. Um, occasionally, like sermons or something. Usually an audio book, though. That's something, to, something relevant about the Lord. You know, not just like Stephen King novels, you know, but something that's you know, like godly, edifying. So, not to say, you, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of things in our culture that you probably shouldn't be watching or reading, but not to say you can't, like, read a fiction book every now and then. Yeah. You know, but it's to say, I, I try not to. I was, In fact, I read 1984, the novel, um, again, back in, like, uh, November, I guess. That's a good book. It is, man, but it's very, uh, it, was, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was It was. difficult because it's like, wow, this, there's a lot in our culture that's like this now. I read it like 10 years ago. I didn't see that. But now I'm like, whoa, this is like... Yeah, yeah, I know, man. It's like, man, we're going to be like this pretty soon. Huh? Because of, because of secularists, dude. Oh, sorry, dude. I was going to give you a handshake. I just want to let you know that we really disagree, but I respect you as Yeah, I appreciate team. it. I do too, man. I respect you I know you that you're just, you're just doing what you think is what you should do. And that's, I mean, that's respect. Can I ask you a question, though? Are you certain that you respect me? I... You're not certain that you respect me. I'm certain that I... Right, dude. You're not I mean, certain that you respect I, me. Look, that's going to require some knowledge on, on neuroscience and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Hey, can I get your number? Uh, sure. So, we have a Super Bowl party this Sunday. It's not a church. Don't let that put you off. It's not, I mean, we're not sneaking a sermon. Trevor, you want to go to... You want to go to church? Watch the Super Bowl? <laughs> yeah, it's just friends hanging out watching the Super Bowl. Did you say you was coming back tomorrow? I'm going to try. What's the weather like? All right, put it this way, I am, but I, I'm i assuming the weather's good. Let me see. I don't think... I think it's supposed to stay pretty good until, like, later next week. Okay. Okay, that's... It's supposed to be in, like, the 30s. Ah. Tomorrow? 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 What's the high? Uh, 55 is not too bad. The wind is bad, though. I mean, Maybe I'll try to... Yeah, I'll try to come out, Dorothy, and see what happens. Because if next week is bad, I'll try to come out tomorrow. It's going to be west at 22. That's the high for the wind? That's, 22 is not too bad. How many days do you plan on coming out tomorrow? 
Uh, I was hoping all next week too. But all next week. I don't. I don't know because the weather they say is bad. If it's oh, like. It's gonna be yeah, so the thing is, is with this kind of ministry, you know, if, if it's real cold, then nobody's going to want to stop either. Like, I don't mind coming out, but nobody else is going to, like, do anything. They're going to, you know, be running. What's up, dude? Good to see you again, man. I saw you yesterday. Maybe. I don't know. Man, I'm telling you, when you get my age, that's going to happen all the time, I promise. It's just hard to remember who you saw and who you didn't. Joe Biden, yeah, he's got some issues. Chaz said that. <laughs> Did you have any questions, though, my man, by the way? Uh, so I'm, I'm, I don't live in Lubbock. I live in, uh, and I'm also asymptomatic, so I don't have COVID. Um, I live in College Station, so I travel down here. Yeah. Are you looking for a church in the area? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we come out and talk about Christ and talk about the Lord. Make him exalted, you know, and, and just kind of see how people respond to that. Do you, do you think that, that, that you change it into, like, what, do you think you would, like, I don't know, I don't want to, like, this? Yeah. I'm not trying to phrase it, like, rude, you know, but do you, do you think you, you know, plant a seed in people's head, or, like, what, yeah, what are you trying to question. accomplish, what do you think? Ryan deals with that question a lot. Yeah. I'm going to let Ryan answer this one. Not because I don't want to, but I know Ryan's going to be able to explain so the same thing I would. Is, do you think that we plant a seed in like, do y'all think y'all are effective in you know, getting something across? It's ultimately up to God, but yes, anytime we're preaching the gospel, uh, God is going hey, to... Hey, man, it's good. it's good. Hey. Hey, it's good talking to you guys. Can you guys come back tomorrow and we'll talk more about the altruism uh, what stuff? Time we 11 to 3? 11 to 3. Uh, I'll come by shortly, but I have work at 1. Okay, yeah, come by like 11 to 1 if you could, All and right, we'll talk more about it. I appreciate your demeanor, nice man. Thanks for bringing that question up. Yeah. I'm not trying yeah. to deflect it, but that way we have more time. This is, I feel like no one, everyone has, you have an opinion, you immediately get bashed for it. Yeah, yeah I actually right. want to hear what you have to say. I think especially now, a lot of people get like way too aggressive and defensive. Yeah, they what do. Right. Mean? Ryan, Ryan Denton. Nice to meet you. Because I, I like, I'm Christian too, and I just, like, I genuinely wanted to hear what you have to say. Yeah, I appreciate what you say it, man. It's understandable at the same time, but you know, most people might not. Like, look, I'm, I'm right also there. Christian, and I, uh, I agree with some of what you were saying, but I, I was just playing like devil's advocate. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're saying like different perspectives of how yeah. they would answer that. Yeah. yeah. Good, man. I'm glad you're Christian. You guys got like Christian groups that y'all are part of or churches or anything? I go to church, yeah. Yeah. I, I go to Christ the King. Okay. What kind of, is that a Presbyterian church? Uh, Catholic. Catholic. Okay, Catholic. You too? You guys part of the same church? Okay. Are you a Christian? Yeah, nice. Trinity Church. Trinity? Okay. Which one, what kind of background is that? Christian. Okay. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're Christians, you know. Um, yeah, we got like different flavors out here. We're, I guess, um, I don't know how you say it. Like, we we go back to the Reformation. Is the kind of Christian that we are. Like, you know, the reformers type. You know, more uh, traditional, I guess. And uh, you know, traditional meaning like church history, all that stuff. So would you say like you could be Catholic in a way? No, that's no. All well, yeah. Like, well, real traditional. It's funny. So you know, like we're more of the. Um, so when Luther protested against the Catholic Church, he wasn't trying to start a new church. But what had happened is, is it got so bad, he said, "Well, this isn't going to be reformed, right?" So they would actually consider themselves to be the Catholic, meaning universal church, like the Protestant church, right? And so um, you had the Lutherans over there, and then you had a group called Calvinists, you know, were from Switzerland. And so we're of the more of the reformed. That's Calvin, more of the reformed wing of that. So we're reformed Christians. Couldn't you argue that Islam is the most pure form of Christianity? No way, dude. Not even close, man. Islam is funny because they'll say there's so many contradictions in the Quran that, 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 that are like total blunders, dude. So for instance, in the Quran it says that the people of the book can go to their own gospels, in Surah 9 something, they can go to their own gospels to find out that what the Quran says about Christianity is true. And so I'm like, okay, as a Christian, right, I do that. I go to the Gospels, and I'm reading in the Gospels about what the Quran says about Christianity. Well, the Gospels tell me Christ died on a cross. What's the Quran say, though? I don't know. I haven't read he the didn't die. The Quran told, tells me that he, or excuse me, the Gospels, the Gospels show that Christ makes himself out to be God. He receives worship. He forgives sins. He does miracles, right? Of course, the Quran denies that. 
So in other words, there's an inherent, and that's just one of many. There's a lot of that stuff in the Quran, though. So they'll say, okay, Christians, go to the Gospels to find out the, what we're saying about Jesus is true. And we're like, wait a minute. Why are you saying he didn't die when the Gospels say he is? You know what I'm saying? So they're going like that. So And there's, there's so many of those, dude. Um, so no. So they'll say that that's the third installment of God's revelation. When in reality, even Muhammad himself, unfortunately, is, I mean, when he thought he was possessed by a devil when he was writing it, you know, and, and honestly, I think he was, to be honest, you know, and he has the idea like, um, so like you have ISIS, obviously, and ISIS will look at Muslims and over here, let's say, and they'll say, well, those Muslims here are not true Muslims. Why? Because they are not. So, so when you read the Quran, the correct way to interpret the Quran is to read what Muhammad wrote later in life as the one that's binding. And later in life is when Muhammad wrote things like ambush the infidel, kill him wherever you find him. I read the Quran before it was very... It's like that, right? If, if you read the Quran, after you read it, you will come out violent. Yes, it dude, totally. I agree, That's man. That's what happened to me. When I was in undergrad, because I'm a grad student, okay. back in Nigeria, okay. I had a friend of mine who was a Muslim. Okay. He had the, I was trying to reach out to him. He had the Quran, he said, the real Quran. So I, I asked him to give me, I read it. And when I was, I was like, there's no way I will read this Quran and I will hate Yeah, Christians. yeah, right. But now what they do is, the one, the, the real Quran that has it, those violence stuff in it, they remove it. So the ones you find online, you won't see the violence stuff there. All those that says kill the Christians, ambush them. But the real, if you get the real camp from a real Muslim, the hard copy where they are, you will see them. But the ones online, you won't find it there. They've removed everything just to it's crazy, present dude. Islam as a Yes. Muslim. Yes, dude. Yes. Dude. yes, yes, yes. That's why they don't say like this ISIS. They're like, these guys aren't real Muslims. I'm from Nigeria and you see a lot of, in the northern part of Nigeria, yeah. where Muslims are killing a lot of Christians. Yes. Yeah, you man, I've seen that. I've read that. Churches, yep. kill Christians, say yep. you deny your faith, deny Jesus. That's right, dude. Those in the south, the Muslims in the southern part of Nigeria, the southwest, you don't see that kind of violence. Yep. So those in the north believe that those in the south are not true Muslims. Wow. Yeah. See, that's that's the thing, man. That's that's why, yeah, I would say no. There's no way in the there's real a pure form. Islam itself, there's a lot of I don't know if there's any pure form of religion or Christianity. Well, Christianity is the pure form because it comes from God. Now that does how so. How do you how do you get to that if all the all the religious texts are edited? Uh, but they're not. They're not. Been taken in or out. That's not true. That part's not true because there are, there are, the manuscripts themselves are capable of presenting, a, a like a more than accurate understanding of what the original manuscripts would have said because of all the manuscripts that have come. So there's like 28,000 something in different languages um, that go back all the way to like the first century in, in Greek, Aramaic, uh, Hebrew, and then uh, of course Latin when it started going to the West, you know. But in other words, like all of these, so especially nowadays with technology, man, they're able to like put all of these manuscripts into a system and like to basically calculate, okay, are there any variants in these manuscripts? And it's something like 98% the exact same. And where there are variations, the variations are so minuscule that you can still tell because you have so many manuscripts to go by, you can tell which ones are the, the manuscripts that are uh, uh, errant, I guess, they went astray from the others, you know what I mean? And so you basically say, well, it's clear, like, this is the reading, this is the original manuscript. So it's easy to get back to the original writings based on the manuscripts that are there. So it's actually very reliable. The problem that if there is one, it's not with the scriptures, it's with when we come to interpret scripture. That's where the problem lies. But even with that, you know, there's, there's principles that we can use to know that we're interpreting scripture in the right way. Like we use the grammatical, the syntax, the historical context, the background. We want to get to the original language and learn the languages and see what they're saying there. Yeah. And then and they come away with, okay, what is he saying to the original audience? And then how do I apply that to our contemporary situation? What, are, what translation do you read? Uh, I read all of them, honestly, dude. And, um, what do you think about the New King James? That's actually the one I have today, That's funny enough. That's, That's a nice, smooth one. Mm -hmm. That's the one you read? Yeah. I read King James itself. Yeah, 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 yeah. King I like the King James too, man. I like the King I James. I got a Nelson study Bible recently. Okay, nice, man. All right, dude. Hey, so we're going to start We're start a Bible study. And I have to be on Zoom. But we're trying to, you know, if you guys are interested, you guys would be more than welcome. We're going to start in two weeks. Not, not this week, not next week, the week after that. So if... Um, 
I don't know what the best way to do that. Are any of you interested though? Like up front, if you're not, that's totally fine, no pressure. But if you got, I know you probably have other commitments and stuff, but if you want to, then I can get your number what's it, what's or your gonna, information or your number. So we're gonna we're gonna go through. What we're gonna do is we're going to give a basically like a a, a primer on on doctrine and theology in the Bible. So we're gonna go through the Bible, look at it as a whole, and and see what the Bible says about God, about like His attributes.